Hey, John, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. I have to tell you, I have to be fully candid with you before we dive in, that when you came across my desk, I, uh, I knew I had to have you on the show because I am someone who's terrified of outsourcing. I don't do it and I know I need to do it. So you are speaking to, you're speaking to someone who needs to be your client right now. Dude, let's get on it, man. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. All right. Good. So, you know, one of the things that really fascinated me is I, I saw it in your bio that you work a 17 hour work week. Is that, is that correct? And um, how? It's a little bit high right now. Um, okay. I'm not, I, I'm only getting like 10 hours a week for like the last year or so. Amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been doing that since my, let's see, my daughter just, my daughter's 16 now and she was the, she was the cause of that. Uh, when she was born. And so, yeah, I mean, it's probably been 15, 16 years. Amazing. Yeah. So how is that possible? And how did you, how did you get into outsourcing? How did you find yourself in this world? So it's possible because I'm, I'm super driven by like time freedom. So I mean, I'm driven by freedom, financial freedom, financial freedom is, is, Financial freedom is easy to accomplish. I mean, it's not easy to accomplish, obviously, but, but financial freedom is something that a lot of people accomplish. Time freedom is something way, way fewer people accomplish until they retire or whatever, you know? And so I've been super driven by that. And so one of the things that I have always done in business is I've been very purposeful with what we will pursue and what we won't pursue. And so... If something, if an opportunity requires me and my time to like, are people going to want me in this thing? Do they want my time? Then I just say, no, I won't do it. And so we have, we always have the opportunity to, to do things. I mean, specifically like people want us to recruit for them or want me to recruit for them. And I just say, no, like I, it doesn't matter how much I charge for that. It's just my time and selling time. And I don't want mm -hmm. to ever sell time for money. So, I mean, it's from the beginning, I've always made choices like that. And then having, having a workforce that I could easily find any skill that I want and they're super affordable also changes, changes the ability to get things done where I'm not the one doing the work. So <clears throat> that's how I've done it. It, it wasn't an overnight thing. Well, for me, okay. it kind of was, but, um, <laughs> but for most people and, and for me too, it takes time to get your time back. Like it takes effort, it takes practice, and it takes, you, you have to start with something small and get a few hours back. Mm -hmm. And then you do it again and you do it again. And then you figure out, oh, wait a minute, I keep doing this other thing that I, I don't need to do. And so let me see if I can pass that off. Oh crap, that didn't work. Let me try it a different way. Oh, that worked kind of, let's modify it. So that, that's how I work what I work. Nice. Nice. And how do we know in our businesses when it's time to start outsourcing? Oh, that's such an easy answer. So, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the opposite of what most people will tell you. Okay. Most people will say, stick with what you're good at and outsource the rest. And I mm -hmm. think that is terrible advice. Um, wow. I'm a programmer. Should I stick with being a programmer and outsource the rest? No, that doesn't like that caps my income at like $150,000 a year, right? As a programmer. Right. No, you should learn to be the CEO of your business and outsource the things that you know how to do and that you're good at. Because if you're good at it and you know how to do it, you could teach someone else to do it. Well, then you're going to teach them to do it the way that you would do it. And then you have two of you. And then you can focus on other things because you're the one who really understands the business and you're the one who has to give the direction and make corrections and make decisions. And that's the really hard stuff. Like writing code is easy. Creating social media posts, like you're really good at social media marketing. Okay, that's dumb. So are like 4 billion people on this planet, right? It's <laughs> right. just like that hard. Um, 
So should you be doing social media marketing? No, you shouldn't. Someone else should be doing that for you and you should be guiding and directing, right? So when do you know, how do you know when you're ready to hire someone? If you have something in your business that you know works and you could teach it to someone else, maybe it's not super easy to teach to someone else, but if you could teach it to someone else, you're ready to hire, a, you're ready to hire someone. As soon as, okay. as soon as you have any process that could be done by someone else, you're ready to hire someone. Okay. And what if, how do you know if you have enough work? Because that's always on my mind is I don't know if I have enough to keep someone else busy enough. That was totally one of my hesitations when I first found out about hiring people in the Philippines. First of all, I had no idea. I, I had no clue mm. that it was better or different than anywhere else in the world. And I, and I had tried multiple other things, right? Right. And my, my three hesitations were, I don't know if they can actually do good work. Um, I don't know if I can keep someone busy full time mm -hmm. and I don't know if I can afford it. So I don't know if I can keep someone busy full time. What, what I found initially, well, I mean, cause my only option was to hire someone full time. Now you can hire part time. You can hire hourly. You can do whatever you want. Although I recommend okay. you hire full time. Okay. What I found was I didn't know how much work there was that could be done if, until I had someone full time, because we're so overwhelmed and overworked that I always just can't, I can't handle that thing. Oh, that thing looks cool. I cannot handle that. Mentally, there's no bandwidth for it, you know? And so mm -hmm. I just pass on all these things that I feel like I should be doing, but there, there's no way for me to implement that. So there's no way, there's no reason for me to even look at it. And as soon as you get someone else who could be the implementer there. Now you be, you're, you're able to start looking at things like that and, and then passing them off to that person. And so could you keep someone busy full time? Well, you know, if you're doing exactly what you're doing right now, maybe not. But as soon as you have someone else, you start to find other things that, oh, this would grow the business. Oh, that would generate more leads. Oh, this would create more, more products. We could find more things. We could do more research. We, the whole thing you start to find all kinds of other stuff. So could you keep someone busy? Yeah. Do you have to keep someone busy? No. Okay. Because you could hire someone part-time. But here's like one of the secrets that I found that I, I just had no, I had no clue, no, no concept of this. But hiring someone full-time was one of the best things I ever did for me, for, for mm -hmm. me and my business. Um, it's such a commitment and I didn't want that, but that commitment is exactly what most entrepreneurs need. It's a commitment to yourself that you're going to grow your business. And it's a commitment right. to that other person that you're going to have stuff for them to do. And, and what that really does is it forces you to transition from being the person who does everything to being the thinker, to being the mm -hmm. CEO. And that transition right there was something that I had no clue that that was part of this. But when I, got, when I hired someone full time, I realized all of a sudden, oh, he's done with this. I thought it would take him four days. It only took him four hours. Wow. And now I have to find something for him to do, which means I have to step away from like the, you know, you're like super down in your <laughs> email. Like I got to answer all these emails. Like this is such garbage. Um, <laughs> And I have to find something for him to do. And I have to create some training. And all of a sudden, you're forced to work on your business instead of in your business. And that was super duper mm. amazing for me. Yeah, I bet. So what are, what are some of the things that we should look at outsourcing? Because now you have my mind working of what is it I'm doing in my business that I can be outsourcing that maybe I haven't even thought of yet? Yeah. So, I mean, realistically, <laughs> so I... We've had hundreds of thousands of customers, employers who are hiring people in the Philippines to do anything you can imagine and more they're doing, right? So what are the things that you should be out trusting? I don't know. I mean, I don't know your business, but Fair. I would say if you're doing a podcast, you should be outsourcing your scheduling. You should be out. Not, and this isn't, okay, let me rephrase this. You said, what should I be outsourcing? You shouldn't be outsourcing any of this. You should be insourcing it. You should have someone who works for you consistently and reliably and they work for you and they're going to work for you for the next however many years. As long as you run your business, they're going to work for you. I mean, like the first person I hired in 2005 
still works for me today. Wow. And that's a, that's a function of the Philippines. So what should you be insourcing? Mm -hmm. um, your scheduling, you're looking for guests, you're coordinating with guests, you're uh, editing, your your audio editing, your video editing, your publishing, your marketing. Um, those are all things that those are all things that I do with my podcast. So for my podcast, the only thing I do is sit in front of a microphone and a camera and I record and then I upload, I upload the episodes. Nice. I don't, I don't write the episodes, um, but it's just me. I don't have any guests. And then I upload it and it gets edited both audio and video and gets published on YouTube and wherever we host it. I don't know where we host it. Um, and then blog posts get written and published and linked and they link to our website. And, um, I don't know what marketing happens. It gets, it gets published as a newsletter. Um, all, like so many things that I don't do. Nice. Right? So what else should you be outsourcing? Uh, content creation, mm -hmm. content writing is so easy. Um, any sort of web work that you're doing for your business shouldn't, you should never ever touch WordPress again or Shopify wow. or whatever, whatever you're using for your website. Um, so much of marketing, online marketing can be outsourced. So, so, so much of it, uh, all your social media mm -hmm. stuff, your SEO, um, it's just so reasonable to, to outsource that stuff. Um, design work, super, super easy. Um, what else do you think you might outsource? Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, everything you've listed, especially all the podcast stuff, because I do it all myself and I know I shouldn't be doing it all myself right now. There, it, so at onlinejobs.ph, there are probably thousands of people experienced with podcast tasks. Like you can hire someone part time because you don't need someone full time to manage. Mm. the the thing i mean certainly not to manage guests and scheduling that's not a full time thing right but right. maybe that person tra overlaps into something else in your business some other part of your business um but it's so easy to find find someone to do that and and then to mm -hmm. hire them for a couple hours a week and they're probably working for three other people a couple hours a week doing the same thing so they're really good at it and they're learning from them and they're learning from you and putting that yeah. stuff together and then they'll tell you like oh yeah hey what if we what if we did this? What if we do that? What if we, what if we publish this as a blog post? I'll write the blog post from the, from the yeah. podcast and then I'll publish it and then I'll link to it. And I'll link to your website and you get all this SEO benefit. And nice. That's how it works for me. Cool. That sounds amazing. That sounds absolutely <laughs> amazing. What's, uh, what would you say is the difference between like if we're hiring a VA versus just going on Fiverr and getting a job done? Like yeah. when you talk about graphics or social media design or posts. Yeah. So there's a place for Fiverr. Um, mm -hmm. So for most small businesses, turnover is a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, biz big businesses talk about the cost of, of replacing an employee is like two and a half times their annual salary, right? It's just right. so, so expensive. For small businesses, it's worse than that. It's not, it's not the cost of the annual salary. It's the mental capacity that it takes to replace someone. And so with Fiverr, I mean, you, you're, you're, you're purposefully guaranteeing 100% turnover, right? I mean, that's how Fiverr yeah. works. You hire someone for a single thing and then you pay them and they're gone and, and that they have to be gone to get another job so they can get a feedback, so they can get a review and, and get another job so they can get a review and get another job, right? So that's how they make right. the money. And Upwork is the same way. It's just guaranteeing turnover, which is fine on a single graphic, on your logo, right? But when you're doing social media all the time, going to Fiverr and saying, uh, let's, create a so let's create a social media graphic. Why oh, do you know their social media graphic? Let's go back and see if that same person, well, they're not available. Well, now you have to go find right. them again, right? Or find someone else. Oh, you're, oh, this person who did it, I, I don't like what you did and you can't correct that. That's not right. Cause now they're working for someone else. It's, so that's, there's a place for Fiverr and Upwork. Um, mm -hmm. For most small business owners, they would benefit so much more by having a stable 
person that they turn to mm -hmm. every single week or every single day. And that relationship continues for years and years and years. And the first time they do something, they don't do it right. And then right. you correct it. And then you work on the next, you work it, you get it better the next time and you get it better the next time you get it better the next time. And then finally you're like, oh yeah, I don't have to, I don't even, I don't even have to look at this anymore. I know it's going to be great when it comes to me. Mm -hmm. And that comes from working with someone like insourcing, like I said, from, okay. and, and not insourcing is, um, there's, there's maybe a, maybe a, an employee stigma there where like nobody wants employees. Right. But I have 40 employees in the Philippines and there's no way possible that you could classify them as employees. They are independent contractors, mm -hmm. period, end of story. The Philippine okay. government will not let you classify them as an employee unless you have a presence in the Philippines, which you don't and I don't. Right. So you get all the benefits of employee without the hassle of employee, right? Nice. So I have to ask, why the Philippines? Yeah, such an interesting question. And when I started, I had no clue. I just had, mm -hmm. um, I had someone that told me, make sure you go to the Philippines when you really start outsourcing some of this stuff. And I was yeah. like, wow, that's super different. Um, there's, there's a specific set of cultural characteristics that, make the Philippines different than anywhere else in the world. You can find good people anywhere. Your chances yeah. are just much, much higher in the Philippines. Um, they're honest and loyal and hardworking. That's, I mean, those are three really, really big ones that you'll find with, with most people in the Philippines. They're all college educated. Um, they're very, very Westernized. So their English is very Western English. Uh, yeah, they have an accent, but you'll never have a communication problem with them. Like they will always understand you. You will always understand them. That's not an issue. Um, they are not entrepreneurial. They don't want to steal your business or your idea. You don't have to worry wow. about that. That, I mean, that for a lot of people, like I mean, I have, yeah. I've had quite a few people say, hey, I just tried this with this company in India. What do you think? Their first question is, well, what's your business model with this? I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I'm trying to get them to write articles. What does my business model have to do with it? Right. Well, because they want to know if they can steal your business. <laughs> and that's not how the Philippines is. Um, you know, that's how other, other cultures are. And the Philippines is just super, super reliable. Um, so why the Philippines? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of cultural reasons that make it different. And like I said, you can find great people anywhere in the world. Your mm -hmm. chances are just higher in the Philippines. Okay. And then how, do we, how do we know that we're hiring the right person? Because I know that that's always, that's always my fear is that I'm going to get the wrong person or it's going to be a big headache. So how do we, how do we find good people? Yeah. So that was my fear for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of months ago, I realized as I was, inter I was interviewing someone else um, mm -hmm. and he was describing his, his process for finding great people. And like a light bulb turned on to me. Everybody that I've ever interviewed about their success with hiring people in the Philippines, um, which has been dozens of people that I've interviewed, they all talk about their process. They have a process for finding people. Mm -hmm. and, and that process is not always the same. Um, it can vary from person to person, but they all still have a, they have a method. Starting from like the job post to, or the role, defining the role to the job post to how they're interviewing, to how they select or how they test. So how do you know? Well, I mean, I can briefly describe how I do it because when I, when I recruit now, I know I'm going to find someone good every time. I don't, it's not a question for me anymore. Okay. Um, so I start by going to onlinejobs.ph and searching the skill that I'm looking for. And I would recommend you do this. Go, just go look and see, does this exist? Um, you know, whatever it is, video editing, graphic design, mm -hmm. what kind of things am I seeing at online jobs? What are the prices? Because then you know two things. You know, um, like the combinations of skills that, that people have. And number two, right. you know how much you should be paying because you'll see how much people are asking to make. Mm -hmm. And then you post a job. Um, and if it, hopefully this is something that you know how to do, like we've talked about, you're outsourcing something that you are doing, something that you know how to do rather than something you don't know how to do. Um, 
if you also have something you do know how to do, then you know exactly what to put in the job post. And then you know what right. questions to ask when you're interviewing. You know what the outcome looks like because you know exactly how to do it. You know how mm -hmm. to give feedback. You know how to give training. You, 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 the whole process is so much easier when the first thing you outsource is something you know how to do. So you post your job. You get a bunch of applicants. Hopefully in that job post, you put a weed out question in it like make the subject of your application graphic designer dash your name, right? That's what I always mm -hmm. do. Okay. Um, then I don't ever do a video interview with people. Uh -huh. um, the, yeah, the Philippines, they don't want to do that video interview. They're scared. Uh, that's one of the cultural things of the Philippines. They're scared of being embarrassed. And if they get on a video interview with a foreign boss speaking English, even though they may speak perfect fluent English, they're scared. Wow. And so I don't ever do a video interview. Plus, video interviews just take time. Like, it takes time to schedule it. Mm -hmm. And in the Philippines, they are... There's only one time zone there. They've never dealt with another time zone. Um, in a lot of places in the Philippines, they don't even deal with time. Like they, wow. they, they only deal with like, oh, the sun's up. It's time to get up and it's time to work. It's really hot. So it's time to take a nap. Uh, the sun's mm -hmm. down. Time to go to bed. Like they, they don't. So when you try and schedule time with them, that's really intimidating often to them. Um, and not everywhere. Like if you're hiring someone in a big city, that's not an issue. Okay. Um, but also then it takes, it's, it's a half an hour where like an email is 30 seconds. So I can mm. ask three questions in 30 seconds and send it to them. And then I, I get to see a whole bunch of things and I'll do this three, four, five, ten 10 times. I'll ask oh, wow. two, three, four questions across 10 emails. And the, there's a bunch of things with this because number one, I'm not going to talk with them every day. I'm certainly <laughs> not going to do a phone call with them every day. I'm going to communicate with them through email. And so interviewing them through email makes a lot more sense than like a video and then just digital communication, right? right. Like a video call and then changing it. That doesn't make any sense. Um, I get to see their attention to detail. Like if I ask four questions, they only answer three of them. Well, then I know your attention to detail is just not there. Mm -hmm. I get to see how quickly they respond because this is a virtual working relationship. And if it takes you three days to respond during the interview, well, then it's probably going to take you three days to respond after I've hired you. And that doesn't work right. for me. I get to see their personality in a digital virtual relationship. Uh, I get to see their use of English. It's easy to have a friend or AI help you with writing your profile or writing your job application. It's not easy to do that when you're responding to email over and over and over and over again, right? And especially right. if we're doing it pretty quickly, like if I send them an email, they respond quickly. Then I send them another email and they respond quickly. Like you, you can't have your friend help you with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I get to see, are there, I get to compare like, what are your responses saying versus what does your profile say? Are there any red flags here? Or I just get a really good idea of here's what our working relationship would be like. And that matters. Like you're not just hiring a skill, you're hiring a personality. And I see their digital virtual personality. Does that match with me and mine? Um, okay. And then it, what you'll find is people will drop themselves out of the recruiting process because they don't want to answer more emails. Um, and usually that is anybody who would be lazy is going to drop mm -hmm. out because they don't want to do it. Um, any sort of scammer, which we see very little scam, um, but any sort of thing would drop out. It's, I don't want to, they don't want to jump through hoops. Right. Um, okay. And then you'll find people drop themselves out. You'll drop people out like, oh yeah, this person's better than this person. I don't like, I are like, I'm cringing when I get a response from this one person, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a pretty good indicator later on. But when, if you start working with that person, you're going to cringe every time you get an email. Right. That sucks. You don't want that. So then you get a good idea. Like people drop themselves out. You'll drop people out. You'll narrow it down to two to three. I'll give a test and I'll pay them for this test. Like, hey, I want okay. you to do this thing. Edit this video. I'm going to pay you for this. Here's, I'm going to pay you $30. Edit this video. Mm -hmm. And I'll see not only who does it the best, but how do I like the process of working with them through this edit of not only the first draft, but the second draft. And how, how does that process go? Do I like what they're doing and what they're saying? Um, from there, once I've done that, I have a pretty dang good idea. I hired a good person. Like, I mean, like 95%. 
that this is a really good person that I've come up with. And so then if we have problems down the road, I know already I, I recruited someone really good. Um, yeah. Is this problem my fault? Because it mm -hmm. probably is. Um, where have I failed? So that, that initial recruiting process is a really, is a really big deal. And just like to give people an option, um, mm -hmm. years ago, I realized I was really good at this and I could teach it. And so that's, nice. that I go into detail in this process at one com, and cool. like, it's $99 and I guarantee you find someone great if you use it. So. Yeah. Perfect. And you, you pay for it once and you could use it. I mean, once you understand the process, you don't need to watch any videos ever again. And you'll, and you'll know how to recruit people for the rest of your life. Great. So. Great. I'll definitely put that in the show notes for, for everyone to check out. Uh, is there anything that we shouldn't outsource? Yeah. Okay. So I often find people that I, I just want to hire a team. Like I, and I don't mm -hmm. want to do it. I want to hire a project manager and I want them to hire the other people. That's the wrong way to do this. Oh. Um, you can have a project manager. That's cool. And I have quite a few on my team, but. The Philippines, they, there's a big trust thing there. Like we go into it thinking, I don't know if I can trust this person, right? Well, they have mm -hmm. that same feeling, but their feeling is stronger than yours of they don't know if they right. can trust you. So if you just hire a project manager to like do a whole bunch of stuff and you're hands off, well, they don't know what your expectations are, what you're looking for. They don't know mm -hmm. how the outcome looks like. They don't know if you're going to like this person that they hire. They just don't know. And when they don't know and when they don't trust, when they don't trust you, they are not willing to go above and beyond. They're not willing to do everything, to give it 100%. Okay. When they trust you, they're willing to give everything. So the first thing to outsource is not your project management. Mm -hmm. um, hire someone to do a task and then later give them more and more. Um, so there's one thing. I. I often see people wanting to build a team all at once. And that's a, that's another wrong way to do this. Like hire one person to do one thing and then, then get them doing a second thing and a third thing, and then hire another person and then hire another person. I have 40 people working for me full time in the Philippines. And I hired every single one of them one at a time. And it was a natural process. Mm -hmm. um, I used to say that you would have a hard time outsourcing sales copywriting stuff, but I've done that pretty successfully with the Philippines. So, wow. um, yeah, you can definitely hire that. I have someone right now in the Philippines writing ads, like she writes the ads and then someone else mm -hmm. creates graphics or records videos or whatever. Um, that's all done in the Philippines. So like marketing stuff, you can certainly done sales. You can do, you can find people to do cold call sales or appointment setters or closers. You, you can find all these people. Yeah. You should outsource everything. <laughs> Realistically, I mean, wait, I, I run an eight figure business, eight figures yeah. annually we hit that last year and I don't have any U S employees. Mm -hmm. Um, everything is done in the Philippines. Amazing. That's amazing. When we're hiring someone and you know, what should we expect the time investment be when you're training them and you're you know, when you're onboarding, what would that look like? Yeah. So first of all, the hiring, the actual hiring, if you spent more than two hours total, total, total across the board, start to finish, you're probably doing this wrong. Oh. Okay. Um, it should not take a long time. Then the initial thing, here's one of the, here's, all right. So a lot of years ago, I read the E-Myth Revisited, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Gerber's E-Myth. SOPs, you have to have them. I suck at creating SOPs. <laughs> um, and I don't like it. I, and, and I think this, mm -hmm. is, this is like super common to small business owners, creating these processes like a ba the bane of your existence. And so I don't do it. I just don't do it because I don't want to do it and I don't like it and it drives me crazy. So when I hire someone new, my onboarding is very fast. It's one email. Uh, here's how we work as a company. Here are my policies and procedures, blah, blah. I mean, this is like a one page email that I write. Here's our paid time off. Here's how we'll pay you. Here's how much we'll pay you. Um, if you have questions, ask, 
And I always say, hey, look, there's going to come a point where you are, where you're scared and you don't know what to do and you don't want to ask me a question because you're worried that I'm going to say you're dumb or something. And I don't care. Ask the question anyway. You have to ask. And that's a cultural thing with the Philippines. They don't want to ask. They're scared. What you can't do is disappear. Don't disappear. That's part of my initial thing. Okay. So then my next step is to create training for that person. And some of the, sometimes that training is not actually training. Like I just brought someone in to run our AdWords because the previous, I got suckered in by someone in Australia who was made a whole bunch of promises that they would do our AdWords better than my person in the Philippines was doing it. They didn't do a better job than my person in the Philippines was doing Mm. it. It took me a year to realize that. And so, but that other person, I had let them go already and they're gone. And so I brought someone new in. So for the AdWords, I explained our business. I recorded a video of me talking through things. It's just a Snagit video. It, you could use Loom or Tiny Take or Screencast-O-Matic. There are probably 50 of these softwares that record your screen and your voice and your mouse, or you can record yourself with it. Right. I recorded a video just talking through. Here's the business. Here's the overall, here's our target market. Here's what we want. Here, here's how I want to approach this, this time. Here's what I want you to do. I recorded this video. I sent it to her and that's it. There's no SOP. There's no, here's our policies and procedures of Google AdWords. You know, like she knows what she's doing and then she's going to make mistakes and I'm going to correct her, which I've done. I mean, this has been a month now. Um, her and I have communicated basically every day and I spend 30 seconds to five minutes a day, not even every day, like every three times a week. And I just course correct. And over time, she learns exactly how I want things done. Right. And she's good at it and she's bringing her own stuff. And she sends me this spreadsheet of 36 tabs of keyword filled ad groups for Google AdWords. Wow. separated by, by keyword topic, by industry. Here are the, mm-hmm. here are the keywords that we're going to target. Here's how we're going to target them. Here are the, then, then there's ads. Here are the ads that we're going to run. Are you okay with this? Right? So we're going to put all that in and, and I'm just going to go through and record a video and I'm going to say, Hey, like this, these set, these specific keywords and this ad group should be in this other ad group because of this and this and this, right? I just do something right. simple. So that's how my onboarding is and my training. I don't go through and create this big full-blown thing. I just make small corrections over time. And one of the one of the big reasons you can do that is because people in the Philippines are super loyal. Like mm-hmm. I expect her to work for me for a lot of years now. Yeah. Um in fact, I've had very very little turnover over the years. I mean, my first person was in 2005, they still work for me, so is the person I hired in 2006 and 7 and 9 and 10, 11 and 12 and All those people still work for me. Um, And that means you can do things differently than what Michael Gerber suggests. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have exact defined processes for when your key person quits because, well, I've never had them quit, but um, so, yeah. Great. Does that make sense on like- That totally makes sense. My time commitment when I bring someone in is like 20 minutes. Amazing. And then the next day there's five more minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, and, and to me hearing that, that's so freeing because I had in my mind that I have to create this whole training process. And then I'm thinking, well, that's just, now I'm just creating more work. So then where's the benefit in, in yeah. hiring, right? So that, yeah. that is very freeing to hear. Yeah. 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 So what, what's that first thing that you, what's that first thing for you? What is, what is that, that you're going to, that you should be giving away? Oh, it's um, all the post-show work on my podcast. Okay. So all so, the, the editing, video, all of that. So here's how that works for me. Like you, you've recruited someone with podcast, with, with podcast editing video experience, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not even podcast. Maybe it's just video editing. And, and to me for that, uh, okay, so this is something that, that I do differently than a lot of people. I don't always hire the best person. I hire someone who's eager and smart and often they're young and cheap. Right. Um, and not that I'm cheap or not that I'm, I'm going to underpay them, mm-hmm. but if they understand video editing, 
Well, it's really easy to just make course corrections. I watch the video that they did. I watch three minutes of a podcast that they have edited of me and I'll, I'll just open it up and record the podcast. Like I'm playing the video on my screen while recording my screen and recording me right. talking and, and then I'll just pause. I did this two days ago. Hey, this, this cut right here just didn't work for me because of this. Hey, this is not great because I don't like the way that this worked or there's too much distraction going on here. Uh, let's lessen that. You do that. I mean, once they see that once, then they're like, oh, okay, that's not how she wants things done, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, you don't have to get everything done correctly the first time. For that video editor person, I'm going to bring them in and say, here's some past podcasts. The reason we do this is because of this and this and this. I want you to edit this one. And I don't want a whole bunch of extra added. Mm -hmm. um, edit it and, and tell me what you think. And then I'm going to give you feedback because they love feedback in the Philippines. I'm going to give you feedback and we'll just go from there. And there's a five minute video for you as the first, like, here's how this, here's the onboarding five minutes. Nice. Um, and then they're going to send you a video back and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But yeah. fix this and this and this. And there's a key difference between Fiverr, like Fiverr, you have a defined price for mm -hmm. it and they don't want to fix this and this and this. That's not, that's not included, right? right? Now that you have someone who works for you, it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how many times you go back over this. It's their job. Their job is to fix it. Yeah. Good. And can you tell us about onlinejobs.ph and how, like, what, what will we find when we go there and how does that work? So it is, Online Jobs is a job board for virtual workers in the Philippines. Any sort of talent that you want, you can find it at online jobs from like a data entry right. person who is super, super beginner to like an investment banking analyst or a high power CFO or programmers, designer, anything, right? So nice. how it works is you go on and like I said before, search, that's the first thing to do is search the skill that you're looking for and mm -hmm. start looking at some profiles and what this is usually the most eye-opening piece to most people is the second you realize, oh my gosh, within 30 seconds, I can find thousands of people who have the skill that I want for any skill that I will ever need. Wow. I can find these people and I know they're affordable and I can definitely find talent. So that's the first thing because that's, that's the really like life-changing moment. Mm-hmm. From there, it, so we're not, we don't recruit for you. We don't mark up salaries. We don't have a contract. There's no commitment. Okay. You don't pay us. Uh, you pay us to access the database. So you post your job, which is free. You get applicants, which is free. You can see their applications. The only thing you don't get is contact information for that person. You can't respond to their application until you've upgraded your account. That's $69 or $99. That's two, two tiers. Okay. Um, from there, once you've upgraded, you can contact any of the people who responded to you, or you can contact a whole bunch of people. If like you search their profiles and you've bookmarked them or pinned them, then you can press contact on their profile and send them a message. Hey, are you Thanks. interested in work? I really like your profile. Uh, I have this job. Do you want to do it? Um, super, super simple. And then yeah. when you're done recruiting, you cancel that payment to us. So it doesn't rebill. It's, it's a monthly payment and you can cancel it and you hire that person, whatever, or those people and they work for you outside of us. Nice. Um, you can pay them through us or not. We have a payment system called easy pay and that's built into your online jobs.ph account. And it works when you have a free account. It doesn't matter. You can pay them through PayPal. You can pay them through wise.com. I, I don't, I, I really don't recommend PayPal, but you can do it. Okay. Um, so then that person works from home. We don't have an office in the Philippines. Nice. They have their own internet, their own computer. You just hired yourself someone on the other side of the world who uh, had a hard time finding a job mm -hmm. and now works for you. And they are super duper interested in keeping the job. Amazing. Usually. Not, not every time, but yeah, they'll go above and beyond what you ask. As soon as they trust you to, to keep the job. Right. I have one more question because I'm just curious. So with all your 
time freedom that you've built yourself, what do you do in your free time? Yeah. Uh, so I have always, there, there's a quote that has always driven my life. And that quote is, no other success in life compensates for failure in the home. Mm -hmm. So my number one priority is my wife and my kids. And so I, I really like to trail run and mountain bike and ski, backcountry ski. And so every day I do one of those things and I usually do it with my wife or my kids. So, um, I will backcountry ski with my kids as they get out of school each, wow. not each day, but a couple of times a week. Um, I'll mountain bike with them. They're on the mountain bike team in high school and we'll, we'll ride together, uh, a couple, two, three, five, six times a week, depending on when, um, yeah, I just got, like I told you, I just finished trail running, yeah. um, right before this interview. And that's what I did this morning until two o'clock. Nice. And so that, that's what I do with my time. I spend it with my wife and my kids for the most part. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, it is. Thank, it is. Yeah. 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 I bet. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your knowledge, your expertise with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This has been really fun. I'm, I'm glad to be able to share.